Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. We do play the Buccaneers in a couple of days, and both teams actually have a lot of injuries. We're going to uh, go over these injury reports first from both teams, kind of some of the important players. Cameron Jordan with the limited practice uh, Wednesday and Thursday, full, fully participated today. Elvin Kamara did not practice the last two days, so that's very concerning. He's listed as questionable. Marcus May, full participant at practice. Jameis Winston, been limited all week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. He's listed as questionable. Mark Ingram, same thing, limited uh, all three practices. He's questionable. Alante Taylor, same thing, limited all three practice. He's questionable. And Paulson Adebo, his ankle um, is still acting up, did not practice all week, and he's already been ruled out. Now, for the Saints, you never want to see all of those injuries this soon, you know, in the, into the season. Jameis Winston, obviously, you don't want to see that. Uh, hopefully, it's nothing major with any of these guys. The only one that's really concerning, only two that's really concerning right now is Elvin Kamara. He has a rib issue. That's never good. If you're a running back, running between the tackles, a guy that's catching these option routes out the backfield, hurt ribs is the last thing you want, you know, as a running back. You don't want to see your running back with hurt ribs. Uh, Justin Herbert actually just hurt his ribs. Uh, last night against the Chiefs so hurt ribs it's, it's a very common injury just because in football I mean that's where you kind of taught to hit so a lot of contact there also pausing the diva with that ankle injury I thought it was going to be very short term for him but it's looking like it's becoming you know a bigger problem hopefully he just continue to get healthy and we'll see him out on the field in week three if not man he needs to uh, keep getting after it in the training room keep rehabbing that ankle and when we see him we see him but we definitely need him on the field uh, moving on to the Buccaneers uh, Mike Evans he's been limited all week Leonard Fournette also limited all week. Brashad Perriman limited all week as well. Then you have uh, Tristan Wears, who is their starting right tackle. He's been limited all week. He's listed as questionable. Russell Gage, limited, questionable. Chris Godwin, who just came back from the ACL injury, actually hurt against the Saints. Hasn't practiced all week with a hamstring injury. He's already been ruled out. Julio Jones didn't practice the first two days, Wednesday and Thursday, but he had a limited participation today. He's questionable. Then you have Donovan Smith who's uh, their starting left tackle. He did not practice the first three days. He's listed as doubtful, so I doubt we'll see him. Now, the biggest problem for the Bucks is both of their tackles are hurt. Looking like one may play and one not, but if that starting left tackle does not play, I'm expecting Marcus Davenport to have a great game against Tom Brady. Uh, with Davenport being that strong, that athletic, against a quarterback that's not going to move out the pocket. Wherever Tom Brady you know, stands, that's where he'll be. This will obviously help uh, the Saints secondary as well because the running back is probably going to have to stay in and chip on Marcus Davenport because that uh, starting left tackle is the guy that replaced the left tackle in the game against the Cowboys. Michael Parsons had him in the blender for those first couple snaps. They had to keep the running back in. They had to chip him with the tight end. And when you do that, you just uh, that's less receivers running route, so that's definitely good for the Saints secondary. They're going to have to block five, six, seven people, only run two, three receiver route concepts. That's just going to be easy thing for the secondary to cover. Next thing I want to talk about is kind of the beef going around with the Bucks, man. I know Atlanta is the rival of the Saints. That's our rival. That's who we're petty with. Atlanta versus New Orleans. That's the real rivalry. But with Atlanta being bad these last couple of years, Tom Brady going to the Bucks, it's kind of actually sparked up. This has probably been more heated than the Falcons in the last two years. Like I said, obviously it's not replacing the Atlanta rivalry, but since both of these teams are good, it just means more in this game. And if you just look at everything that's going on, obviously you have Marshawn Lattimore versus his son Mike Evans. That's going to be a thing. And that's not even the only receiver cornerback battle we'll be going up against. Man, Carlton Davis had a lot to say about Michael Thomas when Michael Thomas was out there playing on one ankle. Uh, obviously at the ankle injury, uh, he wasn't really 100%, but he was still trying to you know, go out there and give it his all. He was held catchless against Carlton Davis, so you know Michael Thomas is going to have something to prove. He also was playing with uh, Drew Brees at the time, which his route tree was limited. That's why he got that kind of the name, Slant Man and Slant Guy, whatever the hell they want to call him. Uh, but now, as you can see in the last game, his route tree is already opening up. It wasn't really slants involved. It was back shoulder fades. He had some out and ups. He had very, very, he had a 15 yard deep in a route. It's so many routes he's going to be able to run with Jameis Winston that he couldn't run with Drew Brees just because Drew Brees was aging. Uh, he was hurt, shoulder, I think his rotator cuff. I mean, his shoulder basically fell off 15 years before that. So obviously the options wasn't there to run those deep routes, those deep in routes. Now he has with Jameis Winston at quarterback, every route in the route tree is open. So it's going to be hard to guard, man. Obviously you can't really press him because he can be too deep. He's not the fastest, but he can get off the line. He's physical and he can get separation. So that's going to be another battle. And also Tom Brady, just against the Saints in general. Last year, we shut him out. He basically lost the game to Jameis Winston and Trevor Simeon. Uh, then we shut him out 9-0 at Tampa Bay. He didn't like that. Remember, he came to the sideline. He was either talking trash. I forgot who it was too. Was he the Nielsen or... Uh, 
Dennis Allen. I just don't quite remember who it was, but he definitely didn't like, you know, uh, that game against the Saints. Godwin was hurt that game. He was frustrated, didn't score, threw a pick to Gardner Johnson. So he's definitely going to have it on his mind to beat the Saints this upcoming Sunday. I truly believe the Saints is the only reason he came back out of retirement. Yes, he beat us in the playoffs, but to go on for in the regular season against the Saints, I think that just eats at him. He's a competitor. He really, really wants to beat the Saints in the regular season because that's feel like he feels like it's a blemish on his resume. Obviously, his, obviously his resume is basically perfect, but he can't beat the Saints in the regular season while he's at Tampa, so he definitely wants to do that. So it's definitely going to be a good game between the Saints and the Bucks this upcoming Sunday. You know for sure I'm rocking with the Saints. I do think it'll be a um, kind of like the Atlanta game in a scoring range. I think both defenses are good, but I don't think they're as good as they were last year. I think that with the injuries on offense, who knows what's going to happen. But if uh, a couple of those guys are healthy, I can see the Saints you know, winning about 24-21. Something that's going to be a close game, man. It's going to be who can create turnovers, who cannot turn the ball over. Just That's just how these games been coming, man. Tom Brady has turned the ball over against them. Remember, he fumbled trying to be Michael Vick for some reason. That's when Gordon Johnson got in his face. He strong picks against the Saints. He threw a pick six to P.J. Williams. So the Saints have been able to create turnovers, have been able to get pressure on him. If we do those things, we'll win this game. Quick intermission right here, man. If you're new to this channel or you've been following this channel, you just forgot, hey, click that subscribe button, turn those notifications on so you won't miss a video from the Boot Tragedies. Join that Discord. Links are in the description. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Twitch channel as well, man. It's a lot of links in there. Click all those. Join those things up. Follow those people. And now back to these Saints vs. Bucks. A couple of guys I'll be looking forward to for kind of bounce back games or just continuing progress uh, where they are this season. Number one, Cesar Ruiz. He's going to be just listed every game. Going to be looking at you every game, man. You can't just be missing blocks badly. Just be average. That's not a lot to ask. I just need him to be average to above average, and he'll that'll take care of itself. The line is good enough that if he's average, we're going to be good. Also, if Elvin Kamara plays, we're definitely going to be looking at him and Jameis Winston, how they're moving around. Michael Thomas. First full game in a long time. Let's see how he responds in this next game. Let's see if he's still moving with the same fluidity. Let's see if he got that same sharpness. Let's see if he got that same hunger, which we already know how that's going to be. So we'll be looking at Michael Thomas as well on the offensive side. On the defensive side of the ball, defensive line. Everybody out there. Kentavia Street, Shad Tuttle, David Onyemata, Cam Jordan, Marcus Davenport. Hey, that offensive line from the Bucks did not look good against the Cowboys. We'll see how this defensive line look after getting their butts kicked by the Atlanta Falcons. Also in the secondary, Mike Evans, Marshawn Lattimore talked about that. But let's not forget these safeties. Uh, Marshawn, not Marshawn Lattimore, Marcus May and Tyron Matthew. Let's see those guys. Marcus May had a very, very first game uh, with the Saints. Very, very good game. Tyron Matthew had a solid game. Let's see if we can get more from him. See if he can be around the ball more. Did recover a fumble. So let's just see what he can give us. Also, last but not least, Bradley Roby. Think, don't think he had a good game in his first game. He would probably say that if he was asked, did he had a good game? Uh, he, he know he didn't play well. He's going to have to step up. He's probably going to be going Julio uh, if he's healthy or Russell Gage, somebody. It's going to be a good receiver over there so we're definitely going to need him on top of this game and also the linebackers beat one I think he played solid and moments had 13 tackles but he didn't play the you know the best game of his life and Demario Davis I don't think he played a great game at all by his standards so I'm expecting him to play better as well man let me know what y'all looking for in this Tampa Bay New Orleans game final score predictions in the comments below and as always this the boot tragedies I'm out